What I am here to help you do is live your dream life, whatever your dream life means for you, and to help you fulfill your God-given potential and eliminate all self-imposed barriers. If you're curious about what I do in order to create breakthroughs literally in as little as six months, you're in luck because we're gonna get into it right now. Hey, hey, Courtney Sanders here. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new to me, I'm a full-time life and business coach as well as wife and mom. I wear all the hats and do all the things. And I really marvel at how long I've been on this journey, not just my business building journey and my brand building journey, but really my journey to success and my journey to live my dream life for myself. So I like to think that that is ultimately what I am here to help you do is live your dream life, whatever your dream life means for you, and to help you fulfill your God-given potential and eliminate all self imposed barriers. So that's why I'm so passionate about this work. That's actually why I got my started in self-discipline in personal development versus business building. It was actually uh, my self-discipline program that kind of blew up that really kicked me off into coaching. And then people started asking me questions about how I built my brand. But regardless of which point of my journey I reflect on, I realize that there's a process that I use to really create breakthroughs. And so I look at how far I've come even within the last six months. Uh, for instance, as I'm recording this, it's April. I I just finished a retreat that I held in South Africa, which was like completely a dream even a year ago when I, I didn't have the team that I have now. You know, now my team has grown a lot, but even as much as a year or 18 months ago, a lot of the things that I'm experiencing now are things that I was just dreaming about or things that I was waiting for the opportunity to take advantage of. Even six months ago, I think about how much progress I have made both in the clients that we are working with and just the improvements that I've made to the program and just um, how systematic and smooth things are running on the back end in my business. And it's all just like, amazing but i want to share the process with you because i know what it feels like to feel stuck and like ah oh, you want so much more for yourself and you want it now right i want to change right now but you're not sure how to make that change happen so if you're curious about what i do in order to create breakthroughs literally in as little as six months you're in luck because we're going to get into it right now all right the first thing i do is pray and if you watch this channel at all you could probably sniff out that i was going to say something like that i was not going to get on google's youtube and make a video about how I create a breakthrough and pretend that I do it in my own strength. I definitely don't, right? I truly, truly believe in that Bible verse that says, acknowledge the Lord in all your ways and he will make your path straight. I take them seriously and so that is what I do. So I pray daily. I have long, detailed, uh, drawn out prayers with God, really asking, I'm um, not just for blessings. I think, you know, a lot of people pray for like, oh, you know, do this amazing thing in my life. But really I pray for guidance and direction. And if there's something that I'm struggling with, I pray about it. And so I, I bring this up because I can specifically think about even um, a little over a year ago, maybe 18 months ago, I was starting to feel overwhelmed. I had built out my team to a degree. I had my executive assistant, my online business manager, my video editor, like, you know, I, I had had a team, but I, I still felt like I was drowning trying to manage all these different people and that it was taking me away from uh, the actual work of doing the thing. And I remember specifically praying, asking for help in this arena. And then no sooner than like a few days later, uh, the instructor instructional design company that I was working with, they were really excited about working with me on new programs and new trainings. And I was just honest with them, like, all those sound amazing and I really wanna create more trainings, but I'm feeling like kind of overwhelmed and swamped with what I have right now. And they were like, oh my goodness, we have a project manager for you, someone that we work with, he's amazing. And I've been working with that project manager for well over a year now and he has like changed my life, right? Um, so maybe I'll do a video about um, project management, how we incorporate it in our business and uh, the daily standups that we do and just getting every Thing together, but that was a huge breakthrough and I didn't even know that I needed that. So I definitely pray for divine guidance and I'm like, Lord, show me which direction I need to go in. And that's often how I get clarity on the next step that you need to do in order to create a breakthrough in six months or less. And that is focus on the milestones and not the big breakthrough, which I know sounds kind of like, what? This video is about how to create a breakthrough. I know this is how you create the breakthrough, right? Is by not focusing on the breakthrough, by focusing on those small milestones. And and the reason why this is really powerful is because so many of us underestimate uh, the concept of compounding, right? Uh, I think the quote has been attributed to Albert Einstein. I don't know if it's correct, but it's something to the effect of, you know, compound interest is, um, you know, the eighth wonder of the world or something like that. And I know that that was said in the context of banking and money and you know, if you save a little bit um, over time, it really starts to grow. But I find that that same principle, which is active when it comes to saving and investing money, 
is the same way when it comes to investing your energy in the different things that you do. And I find that a lot of people ultimately don't make the progress and get the results that they want because they're so focused on the big breakthrough, right? How can I lose 30 pounds tomorrow? How can I make a million dollars tomorrow? How can I like go from point A to point Z in one you know, single leap? But it doesn't work like that. It's a series of little leaps that ultimately get you there. And if there's one thing that I think that I'm really good at, it is focusing on like the micro breakthroughs that I know are going to create the big breakthroughs. Even just the previous point that I talked about in terms of that prayer and me looking for a direction, it was praying for a project manager or, well, not a project manager, because I didn't know to even ask for it at that time, but looking for support, right? Yes, I have these bigger, broader goals of creating this global brand and doing all these amazing things, but I knew that none of those things were even gonna be possible if I didn't have the support that I needed in order to get there in my business. So I, I really find that it's very important that you focus on that. And even when I started working with my project manager, we even broke that down even smaller to say, okay, who are the immediate people that we need to hire? What are the SOPs? For those of you that don't know, SOP stands for Standard Operating Procedure. What are the standard operating procedures that we need to install in the business in order to make things run more smoothly? What things do I need to be offloading so that I can focus on other aspects of the business? Like we drilled down so micro and so small and we gave our all just to those milestones. And so I've looked up and I'm like, wow, six months later I'm here. But the only reason I'm here is because I moved from here to there and then from here to there and then from here to there, and then from here to there. I didn't move from here to there. And I find that so many people are again, trying to make the big leap and they're not leveraging the small steps in between. So really focusing on those micro movements, right? Those milestones ultimately are what lead to the big breakthrough. All right, the next thing that I do to create breakthroughs fast is I learn to prioritize. And this is very similar to the previous step where I was saying focus on those milestones. But if you have a lot of goals and there's a lot of different things that you're trying to do, it can feel confusing because maybe there's like a lot of little things that you're doing. Like maybe you're like, okay, I'm watching this video. I'm taking this advice. All right, I want to start drinking the green juice. I want to start getting up at 5.30 a.m. I want to start, you know, walking whatever, 10,000 steps a day. I want to start saving $5, you know, every day. Like, yes, it could be all these little micro movements, but if you kind of disperse your energy into too many different places, you'll find that you're not going to make the progress that you want to make. So in addition to focusing on those milestones, you'll want to prioritize them and kind of like line them up and really focus on them one at a time. And in fact, there's a really amazing book that talks about this. It's called uh, The One Thing by Gary Keller. It was very popular like several years ago. I wanna say like in 2015 is probably when I first read it, but I think about it often because it's not just focusing on like the milestones and in the context of that, that book, the author would probably call those milestones dominoes, but it's about focusing on the one domino that's gonna knock over the domino behind it, which will knock over the domino behind it and so on and so forth. And so I find that a lot of people aren't really good at prioritizing or identifying what the highest priority is. In fact, sometimes it's difficult to identify the highest priority because people um, sometimes confuse importance with priority, right? For instance, my family is more important than my business, right? But at this season, sometimes I'm prioritizing my business so that I can do the things I need to do for my family, right? Um, there's more time that I want to spend with them. So I prioritize my business for a time to get it to a place where my revenue could support, you know, having uh, support at home. You guys know that I have a nanny, housekeeping, domestic uh, a chef that comes once a week and does meal planning. Like that stuff is not cheap and that stuff is not free, right? I had to prioritize my business. I had to prioritize coming up with great value, attracting more clients, making more sales, so I could generate revenue at the level that would allow me to sustain and run this business, but still have more time for my family, right? So if you ask me what was more important, of course I would say my family, but I focused on the business so that I could do what I needed to do for my family. So that's what I'm saying, understanding priorities versus importance, right? Maybe um, your uh, health is more important, but you need to prioritize finding a new job because if you don't find a new job, the stress of that job is really gonna negatively affect your health and you actually don't have the time to whatever juice in the morning or work out because your job is so stressful and it takes all of your time so your health is more important than your job but maybe you're prioritizing finding a different job so that you can you know ultimately get the outcomes that you're looking for in your health so make sure that you are really paying attention to the priorities in addition to the milestones all right i have more where that came from but first i want to hear from you what breakthrough are you trying to create in six months or less share in the comments below all right, this next step is so important to any goal, but especially if you're trying to create a breakthrough and that is mastering your emotions. Oh my goodness, right? 
Hear me on this. I'm not saying ignore your emotions. If you feel tired one day, if you feel over it, if you feel scared, if you feel overwhelmed, all of that is fine, but none of those feelings prevent you from taking action that you need to take, right? I always say that I put my future over my feelings. So I could wake up today, right? Maybe I don't feel like doing these videos. I do, because <laughs> I know the outcome that I get. But you know, I talk about this in other videos, how I batch create a lot of content. And it could be a lot to, you know, shoot so many videos in one day. You know, I'm tired, I've been on my feet, I wanna eat lunch, I haven't had lunch yet, right? My feelings can say, oh, I don't wanna be here right now, so I'm just gonna blow this off. But again, I prioritize my future. I understand how important these videos are for brand building, how important it is for a connection with you all, with my audience. It gets my name out there. People find me all the time because they're like, oh, I stumbled on your YouTube videos. It's very important to my future. And so while I acknowledge the feeling and will even take steps so that maybe I don't have to feel that way in the future. For instance, right now I'm hungry, right? Maybe I'm like, hmm, Courtney, you should pack a salad uh, when you do your batch content creation day so that you can quickly, you know, eat your lunch and then get back to recording videos. So you're not standing here recording videos being all hungry, right? So, okay, I'm taking pro proactive action to acknowledge my feelings, to honor the feelings, and to see if there's something I can do to change the feelings. But even if I can't, having that feeling does not stop me from taking the action that is ultimately gonna help me get closer to my future. So mastering your emotions is huge and learning the difference between feeling in fact, right? Feeling in your future. You can feel the thing, it's fine, but do the thing you know you need to do anyway. All right, and the next thing that you need to do if you wanna change your life, and this kind of goes with mastering your feelings, is knowing your why and keeping it in front of you. I think that's what really helps me. In fact, even just that last example that I gave where I was saying, maybe I don't feel like shooting these videos because it's a lot in one day and I'm hungry and I haven't had lunch. Part of the reason why I push through anyway and I move towards actions that are going to contribute to my future versus taking them away is because I know what my future is, right? I know what my why is and I know the things that I want to accomplish and I stay locked in and focused on that future. And I find that a lot of people are adrift in life. They, they know that there are things that they're supposed to be doing. You know, yes, I know that I should be, whatever, um, investing a little bit of my paycheck, even if it's like $100 a month, I should be investing monthly. Yes, I know I should be flossing, right? Maybe. Um, Yes, I know I should be drinking green juice or I should be walking more. Or I should probably um, call my loved ones more often. We know the things that we need to do. And oftentimes it's not like taxing or they aren't big things. But the reason why we don't do them and that it's easy for us to kind of like blow them off is because we don't see the big impact. We don't see the big why we need to do that. And so maybe if we realize that if we, you know, just spent time walking a little bit or eating healthier or whatever is a small thing that you are struggling with if we realize that we could prevent maybe horrible diseases in the future or you know when we're older we would have amazing relationships with our family as long as we stay in touch or you know if we invested that a hundred dollars a month it would add up to so much money you know by the end of the decade if we were clear on what the real why is, that creates the natural motivation in order to do it. So if you find that there are things on your to-do list or even things on your goal list that you know are important and you told yourself that you wanna do them, but you just can't get around to doing them, one, you wanna master your feelings, right? So all those feelings of, I'm tired, I wanna procrastinate. You wanna get used to doing things despite not feeling like doing it. But even after you've mastered them, if you're still struggling, ask yourself if you really know your why. Do you know why you're doing this and why this is important? Because I find that knowing your why is often all the motivation that you need. All right, thanks so much for watching this video. If you love this video, you're actually gonna love my new Dream Life Planner. This is something that I have been working on for months. It's almost ready. I'm so excited for it to come out. So if you click the link below, at least as I'm recording this video, you can get access to the wait list where you'll learn more about the planner and you know jump on that list so that you can get access to it when it first comes out. And if you're watching this later and the planner is out, you can click the link in the description box below in order to go ahead and get that planner. So this planner really walks you through the process that I've used and I currently use in order to to create my dream life. And it feels really exciting to be able to share this gift with you, my audience. So go ahead and check that out if you wanna learn more. All right, thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And if you can't wait for my next video, make sure you're following me on my podcast, The Courtney Sanders Show, on both iTunes and Spotify. And if you can't wait for my next podcast episode, make sure that you are following me on Instagram. It's Courtney L. Sanders on Instagram. And with that, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.